What is going on everybody? This is Nicholas Barreto here with your uh, hurricane outlook and discussion. I apologize for not uploading for the past couple weeks. I was on um, the vacation in New Jersey, but I'm back anyways. So um, according to NOAA, N-O-A-A, uh, their last uh, um, the hurricane season outlook as of August 8th, 2019, they're calling for a above above average season and up to a 45% chance highlighted in on the lightest green and their forecast is calling for name storms up to 10 to 17 name storms five nine hurricanes and two to four major hurricanes category three or stronger so you can see in the highlighted um on lightest green on the 45 percent chance of a above normal or above average season now um the reason why um uh, that they forecast this season uh, to get above average is because of this on the weaker on the from a vertical wind shear um, um basically in the uh, north of the of the uh, of the main development region um a conducive African easterly jet uh, over here located in the MDR and above average, also above average uh, to sea surface temperatures, a weaker trade winds, which is uh, right about here in the blue arrow, and also a stronger African, oh, excuse me, West African uh, monsoon. Now in the Caribbean, however, in um, mostly in the Western Caribbean, there is above or basically near average a ver a vertical wind shear. So, with that being said, this um, Atlantic hurricane season could possibly get above average, of course, on top of here. One, above average sea surface temperature is the main development region. Um, uh, on the end zone neutral some lingering El Nino impacts in the Western MDR. And yes, uh, the El Nino has and it has a dissipated and now the um, the National Oceanic Administration are now saying that the Atlantic is um, is more and favorable for tropical cyclones to occur because of all these factors that are coming into play here. All right, so conducive conditions in the eastern half of the of the MDR which I've said before and also weaker or vertical wind shear again north of the main development region so on um, yeah with that forecast it's it's uh, definitely possible but so far this August we haven't had nothing in August like zero tropical systems um so yeah um I personally doubt that there will be above average activity due to on um, the sinking motion still in place. They haven't even mentioned it in this graph here. So obviously uh, on my thoughts, um, the Atlantic hurricane season won't be on uh, the as active because of the um of the sinking motion that's still in place in the Atlantic Basin that's kept things quiet especially off the coast of Africa on uh, on the Caribbean and also in the Gulf of Mexico but however that could change and as I show you this graph and what you're seeing here in the next uh, 46 days here we currently are right now and you can see the brown orange colors as you get into September 1st that's indicating uh, 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 some sinking motion, all right? It's downward motion, indicating that conditions are highly unfavorable, uh, dry air masses, and also this uh, sinking motion also causes uh, some strong uh, wind shear, and we do have that in the Atlantic Basin, which I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. So, however, uh, the forecasters are calling for a change um, in, in the MJO pattern, because as we get into uh, September 11th, and notice this green area, 
on, on just shaded areas right here in the Atlantic Basin, which I highlight down here. That's also indicating upward motion. And well, what, that's, what that means is that conditions become more moist. The atmosphere becomes more moist in, in the main development region, the Caribbean, and, and close to home in the Gulf of Mexico. And also, on, uh, wind shear becomes lower and, and less dry air uh, in, um, in the atmosphere. So, obviously, September uh, and it could be the month for tropical systems or cyclones to occur. Now, um, supposedly, I'm still not even calling for a above average season because because this upward motion right here is not really that strong odd, 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 to possibly overcome on that, on that possibility, but we'll see what happens. Um, the Atlantic Ocean can always come in by surprise, but like I said, I'm not actually convinced of a above average hurricane season in the Atlantic Ocean due to um, sinking motion that will probably keep things quiet until maybe until maybe you know, on September 9th or 10th that's the that's the time of the year um at which on um, the hurricane season peaks so it it's coming people and and like I said it only takes one storm uh, to cause a possible uh, a natural disaster in any landmass uh, such as Barry a few months ago, Hurricane Barry, which caused over 20 plus inches of rain. Um, uh, I can't remember which state though, but I think it was in Iowa. I may be wrong, of course, but um, but slow movers, I don't think so this year, but we'll see. It's only a matter of time um, before we see things and can come back together, people, and make sure uh, that you prepare for the Atlantic hurricane season because you never know what you know what the steering currents, including on um, the the Bermuda High, will do. So, on. Um, so by so what that said, uh, with this upper motion, it could, on, um, um, it could drastically, uh, to change uh, and change the atmosphere into into moist uh, favorable environmental conditions mm. uh, but again i'm not forecasting a lot of systems in the atlantic ocean so we'll see what happens so uh I'm with on the eastern pacific and we got two on um, disturbances in the eastern pacific but in the atlantic ocean uh nothing really going on except Except this little a uh, tiny area of disturbed weather in the in the northeast, um, on on um in the northeast uh, coast on uh, south of Nova Scotia ninety seven L, all right. So this has got <clears throat> excuse me a ten percent chance of development throughout the next five days. It's moving into cooler SSTs and stronger wind shear. But I can show you on the satellite and the system uh, just has been looking on just on just a pretty healthy looking on uh, since on uh, since it moved away from land with uh, with a deep convection you see there. But um, the system doesn't really have a closed um, a circulation and you see the outflow is not that quite expansive uh, due to westerly wind shear. That and that is now tearing this apart and likely be able to dissipate as it moves also into cooler waters and become extra tropical. So with that said, ninety seven L not really a concern for us and and likely be a fish storm. But however, invest in ninety ninety five E in the Eastern Pacific, on um, just has been looking I'm um, just um and uh, pretty healthy, but the convection is not all that solid in nature, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that really deep. Let me just, uh, gotta wait for this thing to load in. There we go. So, um, the deep convection is not really as, um, as pronounced in nature. And the, um, and the system doesn't look all that healthy on the, but it is beginning to, 
uh, to become a tropical cyclone in the next uh, a few days, either tomorrow or on Thursday, on on which day it can it can become one. So, uh, the, uh, the, we have a lot of time to watch this, everybody. So, but uh, but this system is not going to make landfall anywhere near Mexico, but it could parallel on the coast of Mexico with with um, some heavy rainfall and maybe even gusty winds. And I could show you here on the National Hurricane Center on um, on the outlook. And 95E has a 90% chance of development throughout the next five days. A tropical depression is likely to form during the next day or so. I think uh, uh, possibly a little later than that. Um, just since the structure is not that, um, is not that well um, conducive. But the system is going to parallel just offshore of the coast of Mexico. But heavy rainfall and flash flooding over portions of the southeast Mexico, it could occur during the next couple of days as it pushes westward or basically in the west-northwest according to the European model. All right, I could show you here on the Tropical Tibbets website on the European. Uh, the, it takes 95E on um, just basically uh, west-northwest and not really just on uh, uh, parallel on the coast of Mexico. I I think likely being a fish storm. But look at this. It goes, it goes right into uh, the Baja, but likely dissipating at that time. So obviously, uh, not that really a concern for uh, for Mexico, but rainfall, uh, can, it could definitely occur in some portions of the state. So, uh, I think that's it. But, but like I said, guys, uh, just be prepared for the Atlantic hurricane season. I uh, just uh, stay up to date, and I'll possibly have an another update uh, uh, probably next week, uh, since there's not going to be a lot of activity throughout the next uh, uh, few weeks until we get into late August and uh, early September. But, but however. If there's anything in the Eastern Pacific that might or try to threaten land, I will keep you kind of posted in, um, in the next video. All right, that's it for my quick update, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, uh, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell notification icon. And also, also like this video um, if you haven't done so already. All right, thank you for watching. Peace out.